Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tube Talk. Thank you Sophie and welcome to you after a big week for your namesake last week. It was indeed. We start off with Sophie's Choice. Yeah. Sophie's Choice ran second on Saturday I believe. Friday. Friday. <laughs> Whoopsies. To be fair, you were uh, sick. I have been, yes. I've been under the weather. Yeah. But you watched the race. I didn't. I did. I did indeed. And what did you think? I thought that it was very impressive. She kept bobbing her head around. Yeah. That's and she just... looked minuscule in the field. Well, she, yeah. But she did perform well. She didn't drift or anything. So I think that's quite impressive for someone who's so inexperienced. Yeah. She did, she uh, first started, she only had one trial and all the other horses had more experience than her. So she did really, really well and will improve. She's bobbing her head around because she's a bit green and not sure what to do, but she'll be better next start. Mm. So it was a really good start to her career. And she started off a very good weekend for us, didn't she? She did indeed. We After that we had another three wins and two thirds. However today, we'll just go into the wins. Yes, it's good. First winner we're going to talk about is North and South, who won the listed Levin, Levin Stakes. Yeah, so a really important win for her because as a mare, any black type you can win, uh, from group or listed races adds to your value as a broodmare and that of your progeny. So she's um, so she she's already stakes placed. She's already placed in a couple of races, but by being a stakes winner by winning on winning was brilliant. And she came from last. It was a super ride by Robbie. He got her up the rail. Um, she hung on in a very very strong field, and we were absolutely thrilled. So it's made her value. Um, she was forty one dollars on the fixed odds. And when the rain started coming, she became a much better chance. And um, she'll look at the Manor Two Challenge Stakes in two weeks' time uh, on the seventeenth of December. If it rains, otherwise she'll go to the paddock. Mm -hmm. Would you like to start an email, Telly? Oh well, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go for four. Oh, I was going to have four. I'll go three. Uh -huh. Okay. Next up, we have Rude Not Two, who won fresh up at Ellerslie. She did. It was. Um, a really good win because she was racing out of her grade. She's a rating seventy five, rating seventy, so she can run to rating seventy five races. But she was on a rating eighty five race, and we think she's a miler. So we thought felt the eleven hundred meter. She's group placed a mile. Eleven hundred meters will be too short for her. So she did a couple of things against her, but she jumped well. Danielle rode her brilliantly, and it was a really really tough win. So, and she's in for a very good preparation, and we may look at some group racing for her over Christmas if she can win her next start. Awesome. And the third and final winner we had last week was Elusive Boxes, who won on Sunday. Yes, very exciting. Uh, the photo finish took them three or four minutes to separate them, her and the other horse. We, when we watched it live, we thought, oh, we did, weren't sure. I thought she'd been beaten. Another couple of people with me thought she'd won. And then we watched it again, the slow-mo, we thought she'd won. But it took them three, three or four minutes to call it. And so she's, she's now won. About fifty thousand dollars in her last three starts, so awesome. she's going really well. Yeah, so and she's looking for more ground. There's more wins in her. Awesome. Okay, so this week we've got four runners and a little special announcement at the end. So we will start off on Saturday at Trentham Race Three, and we will be talking about Charlestown. So Charlestown has been in training for a long time, waiting and waiting for good tracks and waiting for a reasonable draw, and we're gonna get a, like a dead surface on Saturday, so that's gonna be perfect for him. The problem is it's a thousand meter race, which is too short for him, but we need to get him started. He's drawn wide again, which he just has always seemed to do. He has every time we've nominated him in this preparation, but we've gotta get him started. He's ready to race, he's fresh, um, he'll be better next up over further, but he'll run a nice, run a nice enough race with not too much weight on his back. Mm -hmm. Uh, second up, I have written so badly here, but I think I believe that's race four. There were two year old running, and that is he has a halo. Yes, so a halo. she's running in the group two Wakefield Challenge Stakes with a hundred thousand dollars for two year olds. It's only a field of eight. Uh, we were we had thought about this race, but we were going to run her next week, the tenth at Tirapa. Um, but when there are only seven nominations for this race, and it's got black type for her being a filly, we elected to run here. Uh, and she uh, worked up nicely on Wednesday morning in preparation. She's got barrier five of eight, which is nice. Sam Spratt sticks with her, um, and she is 
she's got quite a bit of ability and she is a distinct each way chance. Mm -hmm. uh, third, thirdly? I don't know if that's a Thirdly? Thirdly. Yeah, third runner. On Saturday at Alice Lee, race seven, we've got Scarlet Secret. We do. We do indeed. Scarlet Secret won the last two races in a row. Her last start last season, her first start this season. Her first start this season, while in a much weaker field, was very impressive. She's got barrier one on Saturday, which we love. Um, Trudy Thornton rides only 54 kilos. She should get a nice run in, in transit, um, just behind the speed. And while she's stepping up in grade, she's got to be a winning chance. She's got to be a really nice each way chance. I uh, like the track to be a good three for her. Dead four's okay as well, or dead five, but a firm track, and she's going well. She's come back very well this campaign. Mm -hmm. And finally, on Sunday at Waipokarau, so how about I say that correctly? Woohoo! Um, race four, we've got Petite Midas. Yes, yes, Petite Midas, she ran second, beating the nose in a $30,000 maiden last start, um, where they ran 107.77, so she was flying. That was at Rickerton, she's come back up to. Uh, the central districts we gave, gave her a few days off she looks fantastic her work's been very sharp uh, she's got a nice barrier draw on sunday there looks to be a couple of nice horses in the race a couple of nice first starters um, but over 1200 meters she ran second on this day last year uh, she's got to be a good chance this is a, a very good chance for her to break her maiden so i expect her to run very well and kelly mcculloch sticks with the ship and for our last little special announcement, Albert, would you like to tell us about Rock de Cam's? Yes, yeah, so we, we mentioned him last week, the Rock de Cam's... Gelding? Yeah, yes, two-year-old yeah. with um, Andrew Cast, and since then we've sold half of him. Woo! So 50% of him has sold. Um, so if you are interested in being involved in him, 10% uh, share is just $2,500, and half of that for a 5% share. Um, give me or Matt a call. Could be a nice Christmas present for someone. Um, but the rate he's he is going at, um, he's been he's been popular. He'll be I think he'll sell out in the next sort of week or ten days. Awesome. Mm. Thank you very much, Albert, for this cheap talk. That's all right. Can I give him a quick sneaky little bet of the week? Of course you may. So it might not pay much, but I think the last race at Ellerslie, race eight, a horse called Terrific, trained by Roger James. A Teofilo horse. I've always liked him. He ran second last start, uh, fresh up, closing hard. He, it, he does have 60 kilos to carry, and it is a stronger field, but I think he'll probably start a short price favourite, and I think he'll be very hard to beat. Awesome. Well, there we go. That is the true talk of the week. All right. Thanks, Soph. Thank and you, we'll, Albert. We'll return next week. And we'll see you next time.